Once again, thank you very much for coming tonight. Let's read in Acts chapter 10. I did peek on Zoom, so I want to welcome those who are on Zoom as well, who weren't able to be here. I saw some of you on Zoom, but I won't call you out. It's good to, good to see those who are, whether you're here or on Zoom, good to have you with us. So in Acts chapter 10, it's a very, very interesting story, but let's, let's jump in at verse kind of at the end of the, the preaching part, and then we'll, we'll work backwards towards it. Let's go to verse 42, Acts 10, verse 42. So this is Peter, he's speaking, but he's quoting what the Lord Jesus told them to do after he had risen from the dead. And he said, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he, that's the Lord Jesus, which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead, of the living and the dead. So the Lord Jesus Christ has been ordained by God to be the judge of every single person who has ever lived on this earth. That's what it says. The Lord Jesus Christ is has ordained by God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. We've heard about sin. We've heard about people seeming to act without any fear of what the future holds or accountability. But this verse tells us that there is accountability. Even if there isn't, it if people appear to escape it now, but there is accountability. There is going to be a judge, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead. That's verse 42. And so this is one of the points that Peter in his message is, is going towards. First of all, there is, because of what is coming, because of what is ahead of us, this one is, he's going to, in verse four, let's go to verse 43. So to him, that's to the Lord Jesus Christ, give all the prophets witness that through his name, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So this one who in the future is going to be the judge, verse 43 tells us that something that has already passed, and my brother here has spoken about the Passover, so it's something that goes way back, but that actually points ahead to the Lord Jesus coming. So it's kind of, don't want you to make you feel dizzy going back and forth here, but to God, time is, is nothing, right? He just, he sees it all there laid out in front of him. So what is sure in the future that the Lord Jesus Christ will be the judge and what happened in the past and even what happened before that, the prophet speaking in verse 43 is that through his name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, each one or whoever, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. What does it mean, remission of sins? We heard today about somebody whose disease is in remission. Maybe you heard about cancer being in remission. So it's a word that we use speaking about, I guess, a disease or something regressing or going backwards instead of advancing. So the word that is used here and the word that is translated remission is has the idea of freedom from, from captivity or a delivery from bondage. So somebody who is trapped, uh, maybe you've seen images of, of very dramatic images of the, of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and you see people being pulled out whether it's a, it's a child or a pet or, you know, they, they were alive, but, but barely. They were there. They, they had their vital signs, but, but then they, they pull them out of that situation and now they can live, right? Then now they're free. So you think of re the remission, the word is deliverance from a bondage, from 
something that's constraining, something that is, is, is causing this difficult situation. So, and that's the effect that sin has. We've, we've heard that already. And so what this message, Peter's message is talking about is he, he's building weight up to this and he's going to tell these people that what they need to hear is that, yes, there is a judge coming. There is a day when we will all, each one of us, will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says. That he will judge the quick, the living, and the dead. But then right along with that, that's kind of the bad news, but the good news is that we can receive forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness, remission, is God takes the sin that's mine, we've heard about that already, the guilt that is mine, and the consequence of it, which I've, I've done the sin and I deserve a consequence, and he took that and he put it on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of what happened at the cross, then I can have remission, I can have forgiveness, I can be free from that. Now, I don't know if there's anybody here tonight or, or on Zoom or We'll be hearing it later on YouTube. And you're aware of the fact that you aren't free. You're aware of the fact that you're striving for something better. We've heard about that as well. And striving for something, trying to, to better your life, trying to be free from maybe certain bad habits. Maybe you're trapped by some circumstance. And all of those things are an indication of what the root problem is. The root problem is our sin. Something we're born with. Something that we have. And that we're never going to be able to get rid of until we die. But there is something here. There's a promise of God. Because the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. That sets you free from that. And that's what we have here. To him give all the prophets witness. That through his name. Whoever <laughs> believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. So keep this in mind. Um, I'm going to try to read most of the story with some, just some, some notes, some comments. But remember that this is where he is going with the message to present the Lord Jesus Christ as the judge, but also the Lord Jesus Christ as the one through whom you can have your sins forgiven. You can be set free from this tremendous burden this tremendous slavery that we have to sin so let's go back to the beginning of the chapter acts 10 verse 1 so it says there was a certain man in caesarea so we know the place it's in 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 israel called cornelius a centurion of the band called the italian band so he was a roman soldier and he was not Jewish. He would be Roman. And I, I'm sure he wasn't Jewish, but he, he was a Gentile. And his job was um, a centurion, a Roman soldier. He would be overseeing a group of soldiers. But then in verse 2, it says, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. So he was a man who was faithful. He was a man who was true. He was a man who was transparent. He was a man who was trustworthy. And he was someone that not only himself was aware of God's presence and that he acted knowing that he was going to give account to God, knowing that there was somebody who was watching in a real way, in a real tangible way, that God was there and God um, was to be adored and to be respected that's what it means to fear god he knew the fact of god affected his life but all his house it says and with all his house so he was somebody that was consistent he wasn't fake he wasn't a hypocrite he wasn't good out there and then crabby here he wasn't you know a good example out there and then angry and no he was the same person out there and at home and so all his family, in, in verse uh, 2, they were devout with him. And it says, and he prayed to God always. This was his habit. 
And then in verse 3, he says, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? He didn't know who, who it was. And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms. So he gave alms to the poor. He gave money to the poor are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, which is where Peter was, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier. So he was a faithful soldier. It's the same word as described Cornelius himself a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So this is a bit of an introduction to this man, Cornelius. A lot of details about him, about his job, about his family, about where he lived. It just reminds me of the fact that God cares about all these details. Just like God cares about the details of your life, God cares about who you are, your name, where you live, your family, God cares about your habits. We know about this man's habits, his good habits. He prayed, he he was philanthropic, he was generous, he gave money. Um, because God, and we're going to see this, God takes you where you are. And, and God is searching for us, and God is listening. And that's what we have with this man. Now, he sent, he didn't know who he was calling, but he sent men to talk to Peter. Now, I'm not going to be able to read it, but in the next section, we read about Peter was up on the rooftop, and he was praying, and he was hungry, and God sent a vision, and he saw three times a sheet full of animals that according to the Jewish law, the God-given law, he wasn't allowed to eat, and and then the voice said, you know, kill and eat. And he said, no, I'm not, you know, I can't eat those, those things. And it happened three times. The message that, that he heard was that what God has called clean, don't you call impure? And he, I think he was a bit confused by that. He wasn't sure why he was being told by God to, to eat things that he thought or he had been learned as a child he wasn't allowed to eat according to the law but then what happened is he goes down and he these messengers arrive from cornelius and they tell him what cornelius had happened to cornelius now let's jump in in verse 24 so here we have a man who is a gentile he's god-fearing and you would think wow that's really good. You know, he's what he needs to hear is maybe just a little bit of a, a bit of a tweak, you know, a bit of a tune up. You have a good car and all you need is a bit of a tune up. Uh, you know, you have a like just add some new paint to, to the house and that and then it's going to be everything is good. A good spring cleanup and then it's spick and span and ready to go. Maybe that's the impression that some people get about Cornelius. But we're going to see something very different. What did Cornelius need to hear? And so Peter was being prepared by God, and he brought him. Now, you're going to have to maybe read the story when you go home, because it is interesting to read all the details. I'm just going to be skipping through it. Verse 24, and on the morrow, on the morning, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up and saying, stand up, I myself also am a man. So if anybody says that you should bow down and worship Peter or bow down to, um, they were wrong. And even Cornelius, he, he didn't really know. And maybe there's some of you here who, who know that what he did was wrong. And you realize the privilege we have. We've been to Sunday school. We've, you know, we've, we know a bit more than Cornelius. So Peter said, no, get up. You know, I'm just, I'm just, just like you. And verse 27, and as he talked with them, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, 
you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So that is the lesson he learned from the, the sheet with all the animals. And he realized, okay, this is the message that God has for me. So there's a message for Cornelius, but there's a message for Peter as well, that God looks out and God receives everybody who comes to him. God doesn't make a distinction between different people based on, you know, various criteria or various whatever thing where how we gauge people. God looks down and as we have with Cornelius. God accepts Cornelius and God accepts Peter and God, everybody who comes to him. That's what Peter needed to realize. Wow, here I am in, the, in a Gentile house. I wouldn't have come here otherwise, but I now know that God is interested in each one. And that's good news. God loves you and God receives us. And I just forgot lost where I was but there verse 29 therefore I came unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for I asked therefore for what intent you have sent for me so then he tells him Cornelius tells him what happened he saw the vision he saw the angel and he said basically in verse 33 immediately I sent to you now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? What did he want? He wanted to hear the words of God. We've already heard that already. The word of God, the other ser the servants who went to speak to Peter, they told them that, you know what? Cornelius is expecting to hear a word of God. And so Peter opened his mouth and he said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So there's the verse that says, there's no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's kind of the, 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 the sad news, the bad news side of it, that there is no distinction as far as sin. We are all guilty. If we were all to stand before God right now, we would all be guilty in the way we are, we're, the way we're born, the way we are naturally. And Peter is, is so impressed by this, the fact that God is no respecter of persons. Maybe there's a time in his life when he would have expected that God would have favored, yes, yeah, some people over others. God would have said, oh, you know, these, this group is, they're, they're basically, they all, they're almost there. I don't know. I'm just imagining, right? But God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, verse 35, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, if you just read that, it appears to contradict what my brother's already said, right? It's, but let's see where this is going. Because what, is, what he's saying is God looks and he sees those who are interested, those who are searching for him, those who realize they have this burden of sin, those who realize that God is someone to, to be sought for, that God is someone that he, you know, will act as judge. And verse 36 says, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, first, it was kind of, in a sense, a restricted thing, but then it actually goes to the whole world, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And you have that verse behind me. I was thinking of that a few weeks ago when our brother was preaching from Sarnia, and so here we have the good news that God wants this news to go out, not just to be whispered, not just to be kept under covers, but to be preached to all, preach peace. Now, the Cor Cornelius would have known about peace because for about 200 years, and this was kind of in the beginning part of that, there was what was called Roman peace. Wherever Rome went, through power, through iron, through sword, through the might of Rome, they maintained a visible lack of outward revolting and um, there's a, an apparent peace. And that's what they, they maintained. 
what kind of peace is he talking about here? He's talking about peace with God, absolute harmony that a person can enjoy, first of all, with God, because of sins have been taken away. Sins, the guilt has been removed. And that's what happens because the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. So pe preaching peace through Jesus Christ. So this takes us right to the cross. Remember that when the Lord Jesus was born, he said, you'll call his name Jesus because you will, he will save his people from their sins. So this expression, you think of peace and you think of the violence, the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And we realize the price or the cost of peace. Peace is not only difficult to obtain, but it's very costly. And he says, peace by Jesus Christ. And then in brackets, as we have here behind, he is Lord of all. Each one of us will one day stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. This one who today is offering peace, offering forgiveness. And so then, court, then Peter continues, that word I say. So this is good news. This is the word, the sayings of God that has power. And he goes and he, he describes the events that happened in Judea. He's underscoring the historical events, how the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, he came and he went about preaching. He went about healing. He went about healing all that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And then in verse verse 39 he speaks about whom they slew and hanged on a tree on that's on the cross him god raised up the third day and showed him openly so god made sure that there was lots of witnesses of the physical resurrection of the lord jesus christ not to all people but unto witnesses chosen before of god even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead so the disciples now over 500 at one time. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. So here's this man, Cornelius. Here's a man who was devout, a man who was widely recognized as a man with a good reputation, a man who was fearing of God, even though he wasn't really sure who God was, right? The, the angel came and he he wasn't sure. He just knew he was a heavenly messenger. He sent to Peter and he didn't really know who Peter was. He bowed down and he worshiped Peter. So he had good intentions, even though he was wrong. But here's a man who was searching for God. And what does God do with a person who is searching for them? A, a person who realizes I have need. I feels the burden of their sin and is searching for God. Well, this chapter tells us what God does. He accepts, he realizes what they're doing. And he realizes that, yes, they are searching for God. Now, what do they need? They need to hear that there is forgiveness of sins because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the message that we need to hear tonight. There are many in different stages of, as many call it, their journey, right? Their spiritual journey. Um, and, and some people simply enjoy the journey. Well, God doesn't want you just to enjoy the journey. There's a man here, Cornelius. God has something better for you. God has something that is conclusive, something that is final, something that is absolute. And God has a message for you that the Lord Jesus Christ, who will one day be the judge. Yes, he will be the judge. He, we will all stand before him. But today, forgiveness of sins is preached in his name. And so what we have tonight is not simply a progression of, of a life of devotion and God-fearing. Basically, for, for Cornelius, everything stopped right there. And if you follow the story, the, the, the message stopped. Why? Because it was Cornelius realized that that is what he needed. And at that moment, he got saved, and the Holy Spirit came and, and 
and indwelt them, showing that his sins were gone, that he would accept the Lord Jesus Christ, because that is what he needed to hear. So there's kind of a lot of a buildup there. But go ahead and read the story, and you'll see how God prepares the ground. And we, I think we can relate to Cornelius, someone who is devout, someone who is conscious of God, someone who is aware that this is true, that there is a God, and that we will meet him. But God doesn't want you to continue just in that general path, but to realize that, no, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross so I could be have my sins forgiven. I've kind of said that a few times, but it's because it is the point that the whole message is working towards. So we'll leave that with you tonight. It's good news that you can be saved because the Lord Jesus Christ died for sinners. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And some of us here are excitedly looking for him to return. And, but remember the other verse that he is going to be the judge of the living and the dead.